you seen Logan yet? Loved it. Yes. I did too. It's awesome. Was I they... know like two guys that are like, well, it was really mediocre. And I'm like, did we see the same movie? It, did it... you go see X-Men Apocalypse? Because I think you saw the wrong movie. Great script. Patrick Stewart, best performance in the entire film. Um, I don't know. That kid was pretty fucking amazing. Yeah, actually. Yeah. She did a good job. Like, she, she was feral and creepy and adorable at the same time. She and didn't really creep me out all that much. She did. She creeped me out a couple times. Maybe I'm just immune to it at this point. Um, but also, like, I walked out. That movie fucked me up. Like I walked out of there like the the one thing I didn't think meaningless. I I heard such glowing reviews about. It. I was thinking maybe this is going to be our first Oscar contender for but script's great, performance is great, but the direction or at least the cinematography that didn't look it looked like a very conventionally shot superhero film. I do feel like we maybe overdid it with the massive fight scenes. Like, we probably could have done one less of those and pushed the story a little harder. But I think the act, I would, if the Academy snobs can get past their whole comic book movie thing, I think both the leads deserve acting nominations. Jackson? Yeah, I think so. Mm. Are you fucking kidding me? He killed me. Eh. Killed me. He was good, but I don't know quite if it was awesome. Now, I, I, I'm saying Patrick Stewart could definitely get a Best Supporting Actor nod. Especially for that... Ah, f <laughs> fuck you, Logan. That was that was fantastic. Yeah. It was like Grumpy Old Men, the really depressing version with superpowers. Yeah, there you go. I like the script. There wasn't a whole lot of deliberate banter in the script. Yeah. It felt very... It felt like people talking to each other and not cleverly written dialogue. Yeah, and th that really helped drive home the point of, of, of the film. When I, they're just... That said, I went on Wikipedia last night and read the Wikipedia page for Old Man Logan, the comic. And there's a part of me that kind of wishes they had filmed that. No, no. Because the Hulk has like a no. whole group of inbred hillbilly Hulk children. That are like... Yeah, we have a cannibalistic, incestuous Bruce Banner. Right. Who fucks She-Hulk. And she all the hillbilly kids who, like, run the town. And there's a Venom dinosaur. Yeah, it's... Tara, it's kind of awful, okay? It, it's and, like, Red Skull is wearing people's skins or something? Yeah, it's written by the same guy who devised the booby-trapped uterus. I don't know. Just from the synopsis, I was like, I, I, I really like Logan. It's a, it's a great movie. It's Millar, isn't it? It's Mark Millar. I kind of wish they'd film Old Man Logan. <laughs> no. Mark, just because, holy shit. Mark Millar <laughs> is is a human virus. He's he did, a virus with legs. is he the kick-ass guy? Yeah. Yeah. He is an awful human being. It just sounds so incredibly insane that I feel like it would be like fear and loathing with mutant powers. I, I, I'm just going to show you, just to give you an idea of just how awful this gentleman is. Um, he he uh, he he started his own magazine. Um, it's called Clint. Except, um, well, I'll show you and the people at home. Uh, he he got a little, let's say, creative. With the font? Of course he did. I wonder what it looks like. Yeah. Trying to find a good picture here. Yeah, here's a good picture. Yeah, when I say Venom Dinosaur, I don't mean Venomous Dinosaur. I mean a Venom from Spider-Man symbiote dinosaur. Yeah, th this is, um... This is Clint Magazine. Gee, I wonder what that font choice... Yeah, fuck that guy. Yeah, that's 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 Mark Millar. That's Mark. He's plugging his own title on his magazine. Oh yeah, he does that because that's Mark Millar. Ah, uh, but in other horribleness, in other horrible fuckingness, we have, of course, what the fuck is wrong with you? Because that's what we do. Let me get the title going. And my husband snoring. 
Where? We can hear him. I know, and I can't even... <laughs> like, there's a wall of boxes, so I can't even, like, toss a little stuffed hippo at him and wake him up. Peggy, go wake up Dad. Each week, Catherine... Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide airwebs for all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And we're going to start this week with something for the gamers. The Nintendo Switch was released this week. Yeah, apparently you're you're not supposed to lick it. Terry, you're jumping the gun. You're oh, jumping sorry. the gun here. I have a whole thing. I don't understand what is the I'm Nintendo presenting... Switch. Like, what is different about it than any other gaming system? Because I don't play video games. So, like, well, it's... I don't understand what the thing is about this it's... thing. Well, it's it's a console with a screen on it. So oh. it's it's like it's it's a portable and it's a home console. It's yeah, that's so it's like they took a DS and made it clunky you're gonna get us so many screaming ads i, know, supposedly I always do supposedly they're insisting it is not going to replace any of the ds ones that is not primarily a portable platform but that's a lie. I, i'm just that's what they're <laughs> saying that's a lie um but there is one other aspect of the switch they they included a child safety measure which, Which was, is important. They added the bitterant uh, denatonium benzoate. Which, that's a fucking mouthful. That sounds like poison. They covered the cartridges with this with the express intention to keep people from putting these small cartridges there because they're only about like that big. About Don't the size of an SD card. Don't put it in your mouth. Don't you put it in your mouth. So, guess what, gamers? have been doing with the Nintendo Switch cartridges. Well, Nash, you know reviewer culture. Like, they have to do a 20-minute video where they tell you exactly what it tastes like. You know what it and, tastes like? And whether the last cartridge tasted worse. Like, that's a must. You know what it tastes like? It tastes like you're a fucking idiot. That's what it tastes like. Yeah. Or they're just longing for the days when you had to blow on the Nintendo cartridge to get it to work. I just... It, we went from blow to suck. But you know they're getting views. So, I mean, is it dumber to do it yourself or dumber to feel the need to watch someone? Right? I haven't watched anyone because it's a stupid thing. Because as I understand it, like, video game reviewers are doing this and making videos about it. Yeah, expressly... So they have to tell you exactly what bad taste it tastes like. Look, we're doing this so you don't put it in your mouth. I'm a play in my mouth! I mean, are you surprised? I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. I'm just like, Jesus Christ, you fucking idiots. <laughs> These are some very gullible damn people. Are you really going to tell me that if we handed you a thing and went, Nash, <laughs> do not put this thing in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Would you really feel no strange compulsion? No, I wouldn't! Really? Yes, really! Do you know those people who like when, they, when they're like, Oh God, this is awful. Taste this. <laughs> no! Yeah. You just told me it was fucking awful. Why do you want me to taste it? Or does this milk smell bad to you? This, is, this smells awful. What do you think? I think it smelled I bad. Think you smell it. Yeah. But, you, you... but there's that weird compulsion. Like I, like in like junior high, we went on a class trip to an art museum, and one of the some idiot kid in my class like touched a sculpture, and the person leading the tour went, "Oh no no, please don't touch the art." So after she turned around, he like reached out and went. And just like patted the sculpture a bunch of times just to be spiteful. Like there's a weird impulse in us. It's not me. And, yeah, and, Mike, and Mike does feel compelled to remind me that you drank what, 30 year old Listerine? Yes. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yes. And that was one of the stupidest fucking things I've That's ever done. Probably what the cartridge tastes like. 
Well, you know, I, I have an idea of what it tastes like because I have that bitter spray for, for Grady. And you felt the need to taste it? No. I got it on my hands <laughs> and didn't realize I had it on my hands. And then washing my face and taking care of stuff and... Oh, God! Oh, oh, oh God! Oh, no! No! Is that supposed to keep him from chewing on stuff? Yep. It's, it's, it's not harmful. It's just something that don't put your mouth on this thing. So I have an idea of what it's like. We should spray down every plastic bag in the house because Peggy loves gnawing on plastic bags. No, it's when I first got him. It was like, I don't want him chewing on like an electrical cable and like doing yeah. that shit from National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Yeah. Because that would suck. But I don't know where they went. Dottie was in here playing and now they're both gone. They're like, we, we don't want you to exploit us, mommy. Fuck you. Start paying us. And I feel we need to confirm again that Grady was here earlier. He's yeah. not, I did see Grady. He's not horrifically scared of me anymore. He was being nice oh, earlier. Good. He's just, he's run off now. <laughs> I was really excited right before the show. He jumped up on the couch next to me and curled up. And I feel Aww. like that's like my win for the entire week. I, I I had to reassure Nash that he didn't hate him for the first month they lived together. He was like, this cat hates me. I'm like, the cat does not hate you. The cat's scared. It's going to be fine. <laughs> cat's an asshole. Little balls of neuroses, man. It's going to take some time. I remember that. I think I was still working at the shelter at that point in time. And I just wanted to like write a paragraph about, really, I see this all the time. It's okay. It's going to be cool. It's going to be fine. He's and actually, one of the cats at the shelter I volunteer at got returned after a week because they said she was too shy. And I'm like, you have to give her more than a week. Yeah. Hey, Grady's a little damn drama llama. Oh, yeah. hey, you little bug. You want to come up here? Here, I got a crinkly ball. Come get the crinkly. This is, this is the Dottie summoning spell. Yeah, I know Daddy's snoring. I know it's really loud. Just come get the crinkly ball. I can still <laughs> vaguely hear Dan in the back. You got to my face right now. Come get the crinkly ball. Every, like, she looks at the ball and then Dan snores and she's like. So our next story <laughs> is, you know, sometimes I am astounded by the audacity and success of con men who are able to come up with, with convincing somehow outlandish tales that actually work just because of their delivery and their way of pulling it off. Like, I'm smart enough to be president. <laughs> this is not one of those stories. Fraudster posed as member of Nickelback. Oh. In a deeply okay. embarrassing fraud scheme, a Florida man posed as the drummer for Nickelback in a bid to swindle a company out of $25,000 worth of high-end microphones. Investigators allege that Lee Koenig, 45, masqueraded as Nickelback drummer, drummer Daniel Adair uh, when recently placing an email order with Lewitt Audio. The order was subsequently flagged by a Nickelback business representative as, quote, out of the ordinary. When the rep contacted Adair, the drummer stated he did not make the order and began to look into had. Uh, Adair sleuthing led him to Facebook pages and a website for Koenig, who has drummed for a series of bands, including Billy Idol and Aerosmith tribute bands, and one of Koenig's Facebook pages um, describes him as, quote, Hall of Fame drummer, Sony multi-platinum touring session drummer. Upon examining online photos, the 42-year-old Dare realized the suspect's drum set, set was the same configuration as his. Adair also determined that the pur purported Nickelback publicist named in the email was actually Koenig's girlfriend. <laughs> I feel like this would have worked better in person. Because, like, be honest, do you know what the drummer from Nickelback looks like? Like, if a dude walked into the Guitar Center and was like, yeah, man, I'm the drummer for Nickelback, wouldn't you be like, that's cool? I know what the drummer for Def Leppard looks like. Yeah, that's probably the only drummer in the world. Everybody knows what he looks like. <laughs> like, if someone put a gun to your head and asked you to pick the drummer for Nickelback out of a lineup, yeah. you couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I'd die. I'd be like, which one of them looks the douchiest? 
Uh, but over email, that's more trackable. Like, this is a con you got to run in person. I actually know what two drummers look like for real. I know what the drummer from the Donnas looks like. And I know what the drummer from Queen looks like. Yeah, well, the Donnas, she's the only blonde in the band, so that's easy. Everybody knows Lars. You know what Lars looks like. That's true. Everybody knows Lars. Yeah, that's, well, that's these days he kind of, these days Lars kind of looks like like the jack o' lantern you leave out a little too he's, long. He's a weird little goblin. Yeah, he is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we know what Ringo Starr looks like. And that's Ringo, true. That was gonna yeah. be, uh... But nobody knows what the fucking drummer from Nickelback looks like. Nobody. So why email? He probably doesn't know what he looks like. <laughs> But this is just one of those, I guess the, the, there's um, an idea that you have to tell, if you're going to tell a lie, go big. Yeah. Because it, why Why would someone pretend to be the drummer from Nickelback? Obviously. Because it's just small enough. It's actually genius if you pull it off because you don't want to say, I'm the drummer for Metallica because everybody knows that dude. Like you pick a band that you know, no, like, you don't you don't claim to be Chad Kroger. You claim to be the drummer because nobody even knows that fucker's name. <laughs> like you keep uh, it just small enough. Like the design of the con was pretty great. The execution, not so much. He didn't he didn't he lost it on the dismount. <laughs> Did not see a problem with the landing. Um also using putting your girlfriend there as your publicist, that probably was a it's not hard to track shit on the internet. It no. really isn't. You just Google. And this is amazing how many people, like, you will Google something and they will look at you like you've committed some sort of act of dark sorcery. I know. Like, holy I shit, how did you find that? You tweet about something, anything, any old thing, and they're like, I don't understand what that means. And you're like, there's this thing, did you know? It'll tell you. So I don't have to. Or my customer the other day who wanted the phone number of a store in like a different state and thought I would know it just off the top of my head because they couldn't they do it themselves. When I used to work at Old Navy, a lady came in and thought that I could open the doors to the GNC across the way for her. <laughs> and she was arguing with me about it. She's like, I just need to get in for five because we open before <laughs> of the rest course. of the mall. I just need to get in for five minutes. I lost my keys and I have to make a flight. And I'm like, I I don't, I'm not sure what the disconnect is here, but I work here <laughs> where we sell polos and jeans at a reasonable price. I do not work at the place where they sell vitamins. I, yeah. no. And like, she acted like I was just like being a bitch. And I'm like, I physically cannot do the thing you want me to do. Well, <sighs> God, this next Who would one. want to fuck anyone from Nickelback? Avril Lavigne. <laughs> yeah. Come here, dog bog. Say hello to the internet. No, I hate being picked up so much. Well, uh, this next one is, hey, from Animal Shelter. Oh. Which, Jesus Christ. Uh-oh. You fucking idiot. <laughs> This is, uh, here we go. It's from Minnesota. Dog equipment taken from animal shelter. A Red Wing woman faces two felony third degree burglary charges and a theft charge after a burglary was reported at the Humane Society of Goodhue County. According to the police complaint, Angela Jo Wonder, that, that's her real name, Wonder, W-U-N-D-E-R, -W and 44, which is old enough to know better, admitted to investigators she opened a rear kennel gate, uh, then entered the facility after hours by way of a doggy door. The complaint alleges that Wonder took her dog, Nutter Butter, <laughs> left the building, returned to the shelter, entering again through the doggy door, taking paperwork and safety equipment from the shelter. Um... She stole her own dog? Yeah, a uh, small Jack Russell type terrier uh, that was at the Humane Society. Uh, they, the staff said the dog, Nutter Butter, and its owner uh, were familiar to the staff as it was the Oh, sixth... her name is Winter. Winter? Because it said Wonder earlier in the, She's on got the second article. second time it says Winter. This was not. In there. Yeah, known as Angela Joe Winter. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, 
It's the sixth time the dog had been brought to the shelter. No, oh, baby. Because uh, in the complaint, Wonder alleged she has a long history with the Goodhue County Humane Society. Um, she apparently she kept, could not keep the dog on a leash and kept getting picked up and taken in. So, in the complaint, she arrived home with the dog, told a friend what she had done, and the friend told Wonder that, quote, she was probably going to get caught by the Humane Society's video, and Wonder should go back and retrieve the evidence. And, and break in again. So she went back, alone and on foot, entered the Humane Society, took Nutter Butter's file and some video equipment, when investigators asked where the file and equipment was, she alleged she had brought the items to her mother's home, uh, stating her mother was in the Bahamas and unaware of the burglary. Why take the dog's file? Like, are you are you thinking they'll just forget this dog ever existed? <laughs> this is, okay, this is in my area. This is actually the shelter I used to work at. And I think I remember this dog. Oh, no. <laughs> There's a previous employee on Facebook mentioned. She's like, you know, I think I remember that dog. Or not her butter. Oh, and I and I and I can say this, I can confirm, like this isn't a shelter where the dog would have been put down or anything. Mm -hmm. They would have held the dog, you would have had to pay a fee. But the thing know. is, by stealing that one file. <laughs> right. You have kind of incriminated yourself. Hey, the dog we had over there is gone. Also, its file is gone. That's so weird. Well, I guess two things happened. Either the dog never existed, <laughs> or we have a fucking suspect. Well, I, to I told him when we were talking about it, that would be like if at work I like stole the deposit and then stole my personnel files. Right. Like, I wonder who did that. Yeah. Or if you, you know, logged into the computer with your login to make a false sale and yeah. steal money. Why? Nutter butter, nutter butter exists inside all of us. <laughs> That's not a good name for a dog. It's kind of cute. It's too many syllables. No. So what are you just gonna call the dog, Nutter? <laughs> that would work. That doesn't sound right. Okay, for many reasons. <laughs> hey, Nutter, what did you call the dog? My parents had a cat uh, when I was in college that. Mm. When, when my sister smuggled him home without them knowing from a crack house that her friend, a cop, had raided, we named him Petey because he had big ears and a ring around one eye like the dog from the Little Rascals. He, as he grew up, he used to sit with his little paws crossed. So my mom decided he must be gay. So she started calling him Rue Pierre. I know. I know. Rue Pierre. That got shortened to Rue, which then got relengthened to Rooster. <laughs> this cat never knew what the fuck its name was. Because it changed. Like every couple of years. You could you could literally yell, hey stupid, and this cat would like, <laughs> You know his fucking name. Well, I'm pretty sure every cat in the world thinks its name is you little shit. Not my babies. No. Well, Dan calls them that. There you go. And then I yell at him. Trigger thinks her name is Hush, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Dot, Dottie will, uh, as much as a cat answers to anything, she'll look at me if I say either Dottie or Doodlebug. So. My next one really fucking hurts because I fucking hate the Big Bang Theory for many, many reasons. But this is a whole new reason to hate the Big Bang Theory. Get ready to get... Dumb show. Well, get ready to get really pissed off, everybody, because this is just one of those... Oh! Oh, no! Oh! Oh! I'm just let that headline sit in for a second there. Let everybody just, just digest that one. Oh! Oh, I'm no! Still waiting for it to load. Oh no! Oh no! Yeah! Really? School staff member told Watch Big Bang Theory as Asperger's training. 
Mm-mm. Member of staff at a Scottish school was told to watch the Big Bang Theory as training to deal with a pupil with Asperger's syndrome. Holyrood's educational committee took evidence on support for pupils with additional needs. Sylvia Hani, a, a support for learning instructor, said there was not enough teacher training. She said a support worker had been advised to watch the American sitcom The Big Bang Theory as a form of training. How? How would watching a show with exaggerated caricatures of grown adults help you in dealing with actual children? That is an excellent question, Tara. You fuckers! I mean, are they going to be confused when the students don't knock on the doors exactly three times and say their name? Because that's what those kids do, right? Like, just just spend the money on actual training. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. The little guy didn't say Bazinga once, so I'm lost. I'm stumped. Yeah. I'm I'm stumped. And they're not all going to be math geniuses. They're not all going to be able to count things really fast. I am. Here's one thing I'm amazed has never happened yet. I am amazed we have not gotten a story where someone has kidnapped an autistic person and taken them to Vegas to try to win at poker. To be fair, it's probably only because we weren't on the air when that movie came out. It is possible. Like, I don't even know if half the audience knows what you're talking about. That's true. Because they're babies. They are. Shit, I made a riff on the uh, that Clueless bit. Stop trying to make Fetch happen. I tweeted... That's, that's Mean Girls. It's Mean Girls, yeah. Duh. I, 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 I tweeted, stop trying to make Jared Leto happen. And people got so <laughs> angry at me. Why? It's like, I no! We love Jared Leto! What are you talking about? No, like, it's a weird thing with Jared Leto, because no matter how much of a douchebag he acts like, people still love him. But people just completely did not get the reference at all. And I'm like, really? Mean Girls is done, huh? It's over, I oh, guess. Mean Girls is never over. Well, apparently no one knows what the fuck it is anymore. I think they were just mad at you because of Jared Leto. We're going to stick with that. I, I like that better. <laughs> For some reason, it's okay to send dead pig fetuses to your cast members and shit. You console yourself with that, with the idea <laughs> they don't remember Mean Girls. Mean Girls is never over. Uh, so last week we had post worker in Ireland having sex with a door. Yeah. Well, not a lot of excitement in Ireland, I guess. Sometimes my cousins are gonna be mad at me for saying that. America just always has to one up that shit, don't we? Oh, Austin. Keep Austin weird. Yeah, they definitely are. Austin man who was having sex with a fence. Charged with exposure. Okay. Caller reported a man outside her window having sex with a fence. Wednesday, a duplex in North Austin. El Dorado Estala, 32. El Elodoro. Elodoro. Eliodoro? Eliodoro. Eliodoro. Eliodoro Estala. That's a fantastic name. Eliodoro Estala, 32, was arrested for indecent exposure after he was seen exposing himself and making lewd gestures. Caller told police she was looking out of her duplex window, saw Estala, her neighbor, urinating on the side of the fence that separates their property. The woman started filming Estala with her cell phone. The man saw her and took off his clothes. So, oh, okay. <laughs> huh. So it didn't start out this way. No, no. That's it's like, silly. oh, I'm on camera now. Time to give him a show. According to the affidavit, Astala put his mouth on the chain link fence and stuck his tongue out. The woman then saw Astala begin to, quote, have sex with the fence. 
the woman showed police several photos and videos of the incident on her phone. Which is a wonderful thing that police want to see when you show yeah. up. <laughs> Boy, I really hope his tetanus shot is up to date. Uh, <laughs> well, and it's really easy. It's her neighbor. She knows where he lives. Yeah, exactly. Also, that's that's kind of one of those things, a chain link fence, and you're trying to have... Sir, you're really... Like, have Come you on. ever, when you're a kid, you've been on the swings and, like, a little bit of, like, your arm skin gets caught in the chain from the swing and that hurts so fucking bad and you get like a blood blister and it's horrible imagine that but your dick yeah but in this case the link on a chain link fence is about that big yeah, yeah. gentlemen i'm sorry <laughs> you're not going to get much out of that yeah uh you might have a very broad estimation of yourself yeah Unless you're hung but, like fucking Terry it. <laughs> you are not a, it's not a beer can, fella. I, I don't, I, I don't know what your previous partners may have misled you to believe. <laughs> but you, you, I What's think. saying, of course, women are bad at math. We've spent our whole lives believing that this is 12 inches <laughs> or being told that this is 12 inches. Yeah. So. Why the fuck? I mean, you would think after getting caught on video, his first thought would be, oh, shit, I don't want to get in trouble. Not, yeah. it's naked time! <laughs> oh, you're taking video? Watch this shit. <laughs> okay. There will be no consequences for this at all. You could really solve this problem for the future by just running a little electric current through that fence. <laughs> Not enough to kill. Just name. Send a message. Man uh, gets chased in the dick once. He doesn't forget it. <laughs> and of course, lastly, this week, we have our... It just... It wouldn't... It. This almost feels like coming home, this kind of story. It's... It's... Yeah. Hello, Florida. Nice to see Florida. you. Florida. Florida man accused of jumping naked out of van. Oh, get the story back up here. But there's more to it than that. It's not. And <laughs> my God, look at this poor bastard. He's like, what oh. I do? <laughs> He's very surprised. He looks as surprised as we are. <laughs> Florida man was arrested after being found naked in a stellar transportation work van with a fire extinguisher. Oh, okay. Well, he was prepared. Please respond to a call at Vero Beach Park, uh, Bank of America on Tuesday. The naked man jumped out of the van and started yelling. Creighton Corsi, 65, told police he worked for Stellar Transportation and had permission to use the van. The owner of the company told officers Corsi did not have permission. <laughs> This is not Corsi's first time allegedly stealing a form of transportation. In January, the man took a motorized shopping cart from a Publix before crashing it at a medical center. Corsi was charged with felon burglary auto. So you're sitting at the I bank. I feel like there's, there's some imbalance. That's not an apt comparison. <laughs> so you're sitting at the Bank of America. You're driving up for your drive up ATM. All of a sudden, Naked man with a fire extinguisher <laughs> jumps out and starts screaming. Yeah. That's one of those things happen that we describe on the show. Things happen that you have to imagine if you're out in the world as these are happening to you. I know. You question the very nature of your reality as you If you experience this in the wild. <laughs> like all the, you have your brain locks up for a second and goes yeah. wait hold on get that little beach ball yeah. <laughs> this, processing this this is the real world uh, equivalent of error 404 leak not found yeah i uh, is it's just what was the fire extinguisher for you know, we did that story that one time about the guy in the hotel who had the fire extinguisher hose shoved up his butt <laughs> Maybe that's what it was for. And, 
but I love how he had really bad Mexican food. I love how he tried to say, no, this is okay. I work for this company. It's still not okay. Does, does that company provide uniforms? <laughs> Any chance? It's still not okay to be springing out naked. But then to add, why would you lie when just they could pick up the phone and go, does this guy work for you? No. Okay. Oh, it's okay. I'm allowed to be here. No. Maybe, maybe put on some shorts before fighting any fires today. <laughs> and the look on his face is just like. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like he looks like they just told him what he did. What? <laughs> You were mom momentarily possessed by, like, Bobcat Goldwaif's character from Police Academy. What is it? Oh, well, hi, Grady. Oh. What do you want? What you doing? <laughs> can you hear him? I can. Hello. Love me. Hi. <laughs> Pick me up, please. Are you done with your nap? Do you want to come here? Yes. Do you want to come here? Did you ever find the treat mouse's head? No, I have not. Oh. And I, I did thorough cleaning before Sarah got here. God, I hope he didn't eat that. I don't think he could fit that all the way down his mouth. You'd like to hope. So. And now he's taking a moment to use his scratching post. We, oh, I, I was going to say, are we pooping? Loudly in the background. I'm sorry, Dottie, their wet food is in this room and... No time is better for loudly slurping the wet food than when I'm on the air, the Dottie. Because I, lo I love Dottie. She is a disgusting, like, she's one of those cats that has to pick the food up and take it away from the dish to eat it. And she does that with the wet food, too. So there's, like, she just leaves little clumps of wet food all around that we have to clean up. And she slurps and... There he is, rolling over on his stomach to be petted. Right out of reach. Which is not helpful. No. He's like, pet me. I can't reach you. Well, that's your problem. They got to make you work for it. Grady, you want to be on the show? I want to be on the show. <laughs> no, he's just rolling around. Anyway, so the first... I heard that bitch Dottie was on camera. First thing we learned this week is you got to be prepared because at anywhere, anytime, naked man with a fire extinguisher. You just never know. We should start that as like a a, a, a gram service. <laughs> like we should charge people to send a naked man with a fire extinguisher to their door to sing jaunty poems. Look, there was a guy that was sending envelopes of glitter to people for fucking twenty dollars yeah. a pop. He made a killing. He made a million dollars in a day. Uh, I'm just saying. We've learned that. Um... Uh, fellas, don't fuck, d d don't, d don't fuck a fence. Mm -mm. And, and when someone starts filming you, it's not a good idea to up the ante because that's called evidence. Yeah. When you've already done something illegal and they start filming, the answer is not to do something more illegal. Um, we've learned that, uh, there are many ways to train to be an educator Sitcom's not one of them. No. Especially a special needs child, you fucking pricks. We've learned that if, if you commit a crime and steal all the evidence pertaining to your involvement in the crime... Yeah. They're kind of going to put two and two together. Ironically, you have incriminated yourself. I mean, th now, had she stolen all of the dogs and all of the records. I would be intrigued to see an effort to steal all of the dogs. Yeah. But she would I, have. I, I would I would love a movie about that. That would have covered her tracks because. Yeah. But no, she kind of drew attention. That one. And we've learned that 
okay, we learned nobody knows what the what the drummer of Nickelback <laughs> looks like. I, I guess. But pull that kind of con in person. Yeah, because email can be tracked. And finally, we've learned if you explicitly tell people this is not a good thing to put in your mouth, don't do it. What's the first thing they will do? It's like if you tell people don't Google something, they will. Even if you sincerely say, look, I you don't want to do this. They'll be like, I'm going to do the thing. And then they get angry at you when you told them not to do the thing. Why did you do the thing? They just, it's human nature, man. Why did you do the thing? Because you said not to. You fucking <laughs> idiot. That makes sense. Dude, you're fa you have failed. But this was important journalism. They had to tell you exactly in what way it tasted bad. It's important to know. It's not enough to know it tastes bad. You have to know if it tastes bad like sour or if it tastes bad like rotten. What the fuck? Do you need to know a wine list for your damn Switch cartridges? Yeah. Or what if one tastes different than another? Right. What if there are different kinds of them? Yeah. And if you find them all, you get like a special poke <laughs> something. It could be like an extra game that you don't even know about. <laughs> Or we could just start an internet rumor that if you find the special flavored one, you win It'll... like a golden switch. Oh. But I heard that was true. There's a switch cartridge out there that tastes like great. Find it and win a golden switch. Gotta lick them all. 